Battlefield 2042 has been out for about a month now, and with the release of the game, we actually have a solid look at the weapons and tech used in the game. I made a video a few months ago about the tech of Battlefield 2042 and how accurate it is to what is likely to exist 20 years in the future, so go check that one out if you haven't seen it already. But that was pretty much all based off of the trailer. With the full game out, we can actually get info on the weapons, tech, and vehicles available in Battlefield's rendition of the future. So today, I'm going to be continuing my Battlefield series, and we're going to start by looking in-depth at the game's assault rifles. As of this video, there were only four assault rifles in the game, but there's still plenty to go off of in terms of analysis. As always guys, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, especially with videos like this because YouTube doesn't like guns or war too much. Anyways, let's get started and look at the default gun in the game. So in Battlefield 2042, the first assault rifle you get access to is the M5A3. The description for the M5 reads, quote, The US military's standard issue rifle since 2034, the M5A3 can be chambered in a variety of rounds for either semi or automatic modes. That last part should say semi or fully automatic modes, but you get what it means. I'm not really going to be looking at the stats of the guns for this series, mostly because the stats are meant for balancing the gunplay in the game rather than reflecting the realistic stats of the gun, but sometimes I'll use it for comparing the guns generally speaking regarding power with calibers and such like that. Anyways, let's start with the evolution of this sort of gun. Currently, the standard issue rifle for the United States Army is the M4A1, a fully automatic carbine chambered in 556 by 45 mm NATO. Knowing that, it's not too hard to figure out how the M5A3 got its name and that it's an evolution of the M4. The only mystery would be how many A's were in between the two rifles. As for what the M5A1 and A2 would be, it's hard to know, although it's likely that at least one of them was a three round burst gun instead of a fully automatic gun. I say this because if we look at different instantiations of the M4 and M16 lines, various versions such as the M16A3 and A4 and the M4 itself are three round burst. The M5 gets adopted in 2034, which honestly makes a decent amount of sense given that the M4 is currently replacing the M16, so I could see the M4 being in service for at least another 10 years, given that the American military usually is very slow in updating its weapons. If we look at the RPM for the M5, we see that it's at 750 RPM, which is consistent with modern M4 fire rates, which range between 750 RPM on full auto and 900 RPM on three round burst. If we look at the gun itself, we see a full length stock and M-lock front rail, which currently is considered the best mounting system for rifles. The front rail seems pretty tall as well, which makes it seem like this is a free floating barrel, which improves accuracy. The controls of the gun ranging from the mag release to the charging handle seem identical to the current M4 model. The barrel itself is 14 inches and is compatible with various suppressors. The barrel can also be swapped out for a longer 16 inch length or shortened to what seems like an 11 inch length. The most interesting thing about the M5 is its ability to change calibers, which is a trait that exists today in platforms like the Magpul Masada, aka the ACR. This dynamism is also possible in modern AR platforms, which easily allows for a swapping of upper receivers and thus making it easy to change calibers. While we aren't given any confirmation of the exact calibers being used in the gun, we can guess based off of their performance, size, and comparing it to modern guns. The default round seems to be the 556 by 45 mm NATO round, which is standard today for most NATO weapons and American assault rifles. We also see that the M5 can use smaller CQC rounds and higher powered rounds as well. The smaller rounds are likely 9mm, although it is possible that it could be another caliber like 5.7 or 45. The larger rounds are likely 762 by 51mm NATO rounds, given that they are more powerful and more accurate over range. Overall, I would say that the M5A3 is a pretty good rendition of a rifle 20 years from now. There aren't any big futuristic changes to it, 
but it still has some steady evolution over time, especially with being able to switch out calibers. The next rifle we get in Battlefield 2042 is the AK-24. The description reads, lives up to all the hype of the Russian ARs, chambered for 5.45 by 39 millimeter with three fire modes and a standard 30 round magazine. The AK-24, like Russian rifles of the last 70 years or so, is a continuation of the Kalashnikov line. The 24 in the name is based off of the year it was made in 2024, which is accurate since the AKs are numbered by the years they were made, including the AK-47, 74, and the AK-12. The AK is chambered in 5.54 by 39 millimeter, which is the same round used by the AK-74 and AK-12, which are the current service rifles for Russia. Honestly, this rifle is pretty similar to modern rifles, with the only real difference being the three-round burst. The AK-12 currently uses a two-round burst feature, so that's a little different. But otherwise, it looks pretty similar to its predecessors. The body from the folding tactical stock to the compensator on the muzzle is pretty much the same as well. The only thing that could make this more accurate is that it might be around the time that an M variant came out. Like how the American rifles have the A to denote a variation of the rifle, the Russians use M to denote modernized. If we look at the pattern of the time between ori the original gun and the M variant, we see that for the AK-47 it was 12 years, and for the AK-74 it was 17 years. So we would guess that the AK-24 would have an M version coming out sometime around 2040. The only other inaccuracy timeline-wise is that instead of releasing an AK-24, just following this M pattern, the Russians would probably have released an AK-12M. Although, like with everything, predicting the future, who knows? But I'd say, so far, the only big inaccuracy here is that we probably wouldn't have an AK-24, but instead something like an AK-40, because an AK-12M would come out around the mid-2020s. Next is the SFAR-M GL rifle. Quote, designed for SOCOM, which stands for Special Operations Command, default chamber for standard 7.62 NATO rounds, capable of both semi-auto and automatic fire, the standard EGLM 40mm grenade launcher, and you can deliver a lot of damage to a variety of targets. Grammar aside, this weapon seems to be a newer version of the SCAR rifle. First, let's try decoding the name of the SFAR MGL, which is just one big acronym. The original SCAR rifle stands for Special Operations Combat Assault Rifle. Despite the fact that the SCAR has proven massively unpopular with Special Forces, but I digress. My guess is that the SFAR stands for Special Forces Assault Rifle, which is pretty similar, but it's still a little different. On the original, the following letter would denote if the gun was heavy or light like on the SCAR-H or SCAR-L, which fired 7.62 or 5.56 rounds respectively. The M on this one took me a bit to figure out, but I'm pretty sure it means module. I get this from looking at the modern SCAR variants and found that one of them had M in the name and that it meant module. This makes sense since the bio literally says it can be used against a variety of targets. The last part of the name, GL, means grenade launcher. If we move to the EGLM acronym, this stands for Enhanced Grenade Launching Module. In terms of the gun, I'd say it pretty much follows the pattern we've seen so far. In terms of the body, it's pretty identical to what exists today, everything from the UGG boot stock to the tan polymer body. The gun was probably made in the 2020s or 30s and is just an updated version of a pre-existing platform. The SCAR is a good candidate for this as well, mainly because it essentially has become an iconic gun, but it really hasn't been adopted by anyone, so it would make sense that the FN Herstal, the company that makes the SCAR, would try to fix the issues of the modern SCAR and make the SFAR. The last of the four rifles in Battlefield 2042 is the AC-42. The bio here reads, Next Generation Russian AR, the AC-42 utilizes a non-traditional bullpup layout to provide a compact frame without sacrificing barrel length and accuracy. Looking at the name, it's somewhat of a mystery, but we can extrapolate from other Russian rifles. If you haven't noticed, most every Russian rifle name starts with the letter A, then another letter, and then a number. The A always stands for Avtomat, which means automatic in Russian. 
The other letter always stands for the name of the person who invented the design, such as Kalishnikov for the AKs or Nikonova for the AN-94. Moving to the design, we see that it is a bullpup style rifle which has the added advantages of increased barrel length without making the gun itself much bigger, which allows the gun more power and accuracy while also being small and better for CQC. It's hard to tell how long the barrel really is, but if I had to guess, it would be somewhere around 18 to 20 inches, which is pretty long for a combat rifle. The caliber is also a guess, and I would assume the 5.45 cartridge, since that's what most every Russian rifle fires, and the magazine looks about the same width as the one used by the AK-24. It has a sort of M-lock rail system like the M5, a large handle guard, and in general seems to be similar to the Tavor, a modern Israeli bullpup rifle. The gun also has the interesting feature of being a three-round burst, with a very high FPS of 1,200 rounds per minute. This is actually a feature found on other Russian rifles like the AK-12 and AN-94, although these are a rapid-fire two-round burst. This would be useful as well, as while it would use more ammo, it would make the gun more lethal as a target would get hit three times in around the same place, creating a massive wound, while the shooter would only experience recoil and muzzle rise similar to just fire in one shot. So, how realistic are these guns, and how do they factor into the ideas that I talked about in my last Battlefield Tech video? Well, let's start with my tier chart from last time about the different generations of rifles. From this video, we really only need to focus on the last three generations, looking at the 5, 5.5, and 6 generations. If you want a fuller look at this chart, go watch my other video, which is going to be linked right here. Gen 5 I defined as a shift in rifles that took the existing selective fire blueprint and then changed the materials used, namely plastics, and reduced the calibers to intermediate sizes that tended to favor velocity over size. 5.5 continues this trend, but also changes it a bit, usually seeing shorter barrel lengths and a significantly higher level of customization. This is the level where most rifles are at right now. Gen 6, since it hasn't come out, er, Gen 6, since it, Gen 6, since it hasn't really happened yet, is speculative, but could include features seen in a limited capacity that we've seen already, such as changeable calibers, bullpup layouts, caseless cartridges, and extremely high fire rates, or even a move away from bullets altogether. So where do these rifles fit in here? Starting with the AK-24, I think it would be in Gen 5. Kalishnikov rifles are generally pretty conservative, with metal constructions and little in the way of customization, but still retaining an intermediate caliber and relatively advanced recoil control, even if that doesn't exist in the game. Next, let's look at the Svar, which is in my opinion also in Gen 5. It has a higher caliber and longer barrel, which is in line with Gen 4, but it is also very modular like we see in Gen 5.5, and it has a plastic construction, so in my opinion it belongs at Gen 5 with the AK. The M5A3 is a bit more difficult, but I would just barely put it in a Gen 6. The biggest reason is that the M5 is quite modular, and has the ability to switch calibers, which other modern rifles don't, and it's a feature that only a few rifles have today. Finally, if we look at the AC-42, which was probably made in the year 2042, this is a solid Gen 6 rifle. This gun uses a high RPM burst mode and a bullpup design, which in my opinion makes it even more advanced than all the other rifles. So that's it for this video everyone, let me know what you think of this, I plan on making more videos about the Battlefield tech now that the game is out, so let me know what class of weapon or vehicle you want me to cover next. Also in the comments, let me know what you think of Battlefield 2042 so far. How's the gunplay? What classes do you like the most? Honestly, a big question for me. Do you think it's a, as bad a game as a lot of people make it out to be? Or do you think it's actually a good game? Personally, I'm not too concerned. I think a lot of the criticism is overhyped. And while I definitely think it needs work, most of the Battlefield games start like this and end up getting really good later. Nonetheless, I am having some issues. The biggest issues I'm having are sometimes the reload notification will stay on even after I've reloaded. 
Also, when the game is first loading in, I have these really awful graphics that are honestly really fucking scary looking. <laughs> um, but besides that, I think it's all right. I think there definitely needs to be way more guns though. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.